Some days are just unforgettable. The birth of a child, your first day at school, the day you fell in a giant sinkhole. Well, at least that last part is the reality for one woman in Plant City. You're in the ground? It compresses you. It's hard to, you can't maneuver out of it. You're wiggling and you're maneuvering more into it. So we're here in Central Florida to investigate the problem of massive sinkholes being caused by groundwater pumping. Basically, to get fresh water, they've caused all the porous limestone underneath Central Florida to start to cave in and crack, causing homes, neighborhoods, even cars to start falling into giant holes. So we're gonna get to the bottom of that story, find out if there are any possible solutions. Sinkholes are the result of groundwater pumping, the process we use to retrieve 80 billion gallons of water every day. The process is simple. Water falls from the sky and sinks down through the ground to fill aquifers, which are like massive underground vaults of water. By drilling into these aquifers, we can pump fresh water out. It's cheap and, in theory, a renewable source of drinking water for this country. More than half of our water is already produced this way. The problem is, we're using too much of it too fast. We're draining aquifers faster than they can be replenished, and it's compromising not only wetlands, lakes, and rivers, but the structural integrity of Florida's limestone foundation. In Florida, where 90% of the population relies on groundwater for drinking, it's no surprise that sinkholes swallow up new terrain every day. So we're right outside of Gainesville, and this house right here has a huge fucking hole in its backyard. Looks like it's about 80 yards across, maybe 30, 40 yards deep. Just a fucking massive hole in the center of the earth. We spoke to some of the neighbors. No one wanted to appear on camera, but they did know the people who lived here, and it happened in the middle of the night. They said it sounded like thunder, and then suddenly went outside to find their backyard had caved in. The Florida Aquifer, this is where we have all of the water that's underneath us. It's kind of like a bank account where you have a certain amount of money and you have bills that need to be paid every month. And those could be the springs and the rivers, that could be the uptake that's used for plants and trees. So you have withdrawals from your account, direct withdrawals, which would be people watering their lawns, washing their cars, cooling towers at power plants. And then there are the deposits, and deposits are almost exclusively from rainfall, and it's just the percentage of rainfall that manages to percolate down and get right back into the system. Right now we happen to be in a drought, and we happen to have the highest amount of consumptive use that we've ever had, and there isn't enough water. So we were trying to reach the family who lived here previously, but nobody has gotten back to us. It's super terrifying to know that, you know, we're in a neighborhood where there's a bunch of families and literally at any point, shit like this can just open up. If you've got a home with a 36-foot hole in the front yard, under the current definition of what constitutes a sinkhole, that's not covered because it didn't affect the house. Now forget about the fact it completely destroys the value of the home. The idea was introduced and then ultimately adopted into law that required all property insurers who sell insurance in the state of Florida to provide uh, sinkhole coverage. But when the claims got to an unacceptable level for the insurance industry because they felt they were losing money over that, there was a real legislative push to try and address the issue by discouraging claims. I mean, you can see the amount of control that they're exercising over property rights of people uh, by being able to change the definition of what constitutes a sinkhole. In Florida, we're also over permitting. We're giving permits for withdrawals of water, mm -hmm. water that we simply don't have. So permits are being offered to very large industrial operations, mining, or agriculture in some cases. It's 
it's too much. Mm -hmm. We don't have that much water to offer. And because of that, that's why I see the flow declining in the springs and slowing down over time. So if groundwater pumping empties our aquifers and costs homeowners billions in sinkhole damages, why do we still do it? Because it's cheap. With population levels skyrocketing, especially in Florida, the supply authorities in charge of drinking water for Tampa Bay and St. Petersburg have to find a way to keep the taps flowing. Tampa Bay water has increased groundwater pumping by 400% since 1960, extracting 4.2 billion gallons of water each day from the Floridan aquifer just to keep up. The first to pay for all this pumping, of course, is the environment. Florida springs have begun drying up, and rivers are soon predicted to follow. I've seen the quantity of water disappearing. I've seen the lifeblood of the planet slow down. There's mm -hmm. less flow coming out of these springs. And I've seen a continued degrading of the quality of the water in the springs and rivers. As more and more sinkholes opened up, Tampa Bay water was hit with a number of lawsuits from property owners whose wells had been overpumped. They decided to try their hand at making ocean water drinkable. So they proposed the largest desalination plant in the Western Hemisphere, a notoriously expensive solution Tampa citizens weren't exactly stoked about. Despite the amount of energy required, the Tampa Bay desalination plant was eventually approved and today provides around 10% of the region's drinking water. 15 years ago, this region was suffering some drought, looking for water sources other than groundwater. This was an alternative that we chose. There was a bunch of projects we called alternative sources that were looked at, river waters, uh, building reservoirs, building a desal plant. And we had engineers study it and uh, found out it was possible with the cost. And this was the most cost effective? It wasn't the most cost effective, but it was most drought proof. Uh -huh. Can you give us information on how much money it takes to keep a place like this running? I'll use a rule of thumb. The plant is a 25 million gallon a day plant, and to run it 25 million gallons a day on a 365 days would be about $20 million in operations. So why in particular is this the most expensive? It's all because of the power and to some degree the, the chemicals, but the power is uh, close to 50% of the operating cost just to keep the lights and the pumps running. There's a lot of horsepower. It is more expensive than the other sources and it's a little more complicated than treating groundwater. But when it gets down to you don't have any water, it's a very viable solution. You need to go to the hospital, and the only vehicle you have is an SUV, you'll get in that SUV, and it's the best way to get in there. The bottom line with drinking water is that when you use groundwater, let's just say it costs a penny. Okay? Yeah. If you start withdrawing water from a surface water body, a lake, a river, and have to clean that and deliver it to the public, that costs 10 cents. If you have to desalinate the same quantity of water, costs a dollar. There are springs that are drying up all over the state of Florida. Flow is down at all of the springs. What do we have to do to keep everything from falling apart? The unfortunate reality is that we're already feeling the pressures of a freshwater shortage in Florida. Houses are falling into sinkholes, springs are drying up, and homeowners will continue getting screwed by insurance companies unless someone's able to find a solution. The question really is whether or not Florida will be able to pull itself together before everybody ends up sitting in the sinkholes in their backyards, drinking desalinated ocean water out of Dixie cups. No one has a right to own the water. It's always been somebody trying to steal our water. Don't take my water. You know, I depend on it for my livelihood. It's the North versus the South. It's the war of water in California. It's been going on since the uh, gold rush, and uh, it's continuing to this day.